Hello, it's Stefana Johnson here, and you're listening and watching Stefana Speaks. I am a model for business, and I focus on a holistic approach to life as well as business. And I created or developed a program called Pilot, Pilot Method. And it's a way to become more aware of our lives and get off of automatic pilot. Today's show I'm going to focus specifically on the O, or observation. So we've gone through P of pilot, and that is practicing presence. When we practice presence, we become centered more in the moment, in now, and it release, releases the extra baggage that we carry around as human beings, I think it's inevitable because of the way we're developed as human beings. We have an emotional body, we have a physical body, we have a, a mental body, and we have a psychological body. And as I say this, I realize um, from the different comments that I've gotten from people who care greatly about me, I'm sure, uh, I want to ensure right now that I have a disclaimer. So this show is in, for an entertainment purpose. It is not to give physical... Um, uh, medical advice or legal advice or accounting advice or any other kind of advice. I'm here strictly from a place of genuine uh, contribution to my fellow human guide. And I think that, uh, so there's the disclaimer. Take what you hear, take what you see at your own Okay, at your own risk, but listen from your heart, and you can differentiate and weave through uh, what people say and what you see and choose for yourself whether or not it's something that you want to implement in your life and disregard things that you don't uh, find workable or wish to have in your life. I hope that for you. I hope that is how you live your life anyway, so that it's not just taking something from someone else or something else and deciding that that's how you're going to live your life without any observation. So P, practicing presence, is coming into that space, coming into that moment where you are, uh, like, like Eckhart Tolle says, the power of now. But this is a little bit different in that when you're practicing presence, it's not about excluding everything else. It's about being present with in that. So for me that's very key because there's a point where we can get into this I will block out everything else. And now while this takes some practice and this is something that I've worked on uh, by being a, a student of Pema Chodron is that instead of blocking out all of the negative or our past trauma or anything that's existing in our lives that may not uh, be something that we desire at that time, that if we block that out or stop it, it actually creates a resistance. And that resistance in our energy field can act as a block. I won't go any further into that and get into my esoteric woo-woo stuff until you become a client and then you get all the good juicy stuff. But what I'm saying here is that when you practice presence, you are present with your wholeness. And starting with your breath, you can do just that. So I is intention. The I of the pilot, P-I-L-O-T. So the I is intention, intentional. So if you haven't heard me speak before, then I'm talking about the pilot method that I've developed. And in having an intention, not only for your day, how about for your life, for your business, for your family, for your health. So some would say, oh, well, that's like a goal, isn't it? And for me, it's very different than a goal. So intention is when you intend something. So you are, you are coming from a place of that wholeness and intending or you are expressing 
your creation. Let's go on to L. So L for me is bringing in the listening piece and uh, perhaps tomorrow I'll go over specifically the L list of listening uh, and, and go over the fundamentals of that. Laughter is the other piece. It's very important as well. And the reason being for laughter is that it's actually something that I use as a therapeutic tool. And especially with stress and, and the anxiety that some can have with an experience of life. Laughter can shift in the body energy and uh, feelings that are negative very quickly. It's one of the fastest ways to release stress. You cannot be laughing and stressed at the same time. You cannot be upset and, and uh, laughing at the same time. It also shuts off that egoic mind. All right, so once again, I can go off onto uh, esoteric views and uh, my woo-woo stuff, although I'm very grounded in, in fundamentals here. I do really like to play around in the woo-woo stuff. L also represents love for me. And again, that love is the vibration of love as opposed to uh, the romantic love between two humans, right? For another uh, look on the L, all of those come to lightening up for me. It really is about lightening up. When, uh, when I was originally coming together with this pilot method and using something as a system for myself, I'm big on systems, so I, I was looking at how can I, how can I make my life better? How can I make my life more wonderful with my boys especially? So my boys are fundamental to my existence, that they are my um, uh, probably my highest value. Uh, that's if I'm going to spend my time doing something, I'm going to be spending my time with my sons if I have extra free time, right? If you look at that on the grand scheme of things, will I, will I go see a movie or will I go spend time with my boys? And I choose spending time with my boys. And the, the development of pilot came from when I was piloting an airplane. Now, uh, this is just when I was a student, and when I had taken aviation in high school as an elective, I thought, well, I'm going to get up and fly in two weeks. This is so exciting. That did not happen. The, the study part, book study, and actually studying the terrain and maps and trajectory, because when you are flying, you, you have a different landscape and you need to understand the landscape and then you also have all of your gauges that you have to understand and before I even got into the cockpit there was all of this learning that had to take place and then as you get into the cockpit you know I sat down in the cockpit with my instructor and just nervous and looking around and he could tell that I wasn't fully present and the first thing he said to me was just, just just arrive here and so we started with getting my presence my attention on the gauges and the environment in within the cockpit as well as outside of me so that I would know and then he from there what was my intention well I wanted to have a he didn't actually use that word but he uh, so, so what are, all we're going to do here, we're just going to go up, we're going to look around, and we're going to land. That's it. And that way of looking at things and me being able to listen and to learn from that way, it really lightened things up so that I could experience that flight from a place of joy and enjoy it as opposed to being completely stressed out. And I'm grateful to that instructor for being able to laugh with me and have a, a good experience and I love that I have that as a foundation for why I created pilot for myself now because I always have that uh, understanding that for me piloting was I mean it's huge there's not not everybody is doing it not everybody is becoming a solo pilot it's, it's not super easy right 
And then I looked at parenting, my goodness, everybody's becoming a parent. Everybody knows about parenting. And look at all the parenting books there are. And yet, what kind of a job are we doing? How, how well are we doing? Are we actually getting to our destination? Well, if we look at our children, if we look at the condition of our planet, if we look at the condition of our families, I don't know that we are. I don't know that we are safely getting to our destination, and I don't know that the the, the children are, are growing up in a way that uh, I would consider arriving at their destination safely. And so I had to look at that for myself, being a parent and being responsible for these two beautiful boys. And that's why I developed something like this for me, because in the thick of it, when you've got a screaming baby and uh, a two-year-old running around and you're completely feeling awful because of, you know, you just had a baby, for me, my experience, uh, I had a lot of chaos going on and I couldn't filter out the noise of my past trauma and figure out how I'm going to do my business and figure out all these components that were going on. So I'm very innovative and I said, okay, I've got to see how I can work this. You know, these affirmations are wonderful and I love, loved, uh, and, and still love. I love, and at the time was reading, right when my Daxi was born, I was reading uh, Louise Hayes, You Can Heal Your Life. And it was so beautiful and so wonderful. And there were so many affirmations. And affirmations just don't work for me sometimes. It's like, you know, it's not, it's not fundamental to who I am to sit there and say, I am good, I am wonderful. I mean, it's very sweet, but my, my brain, uh, I guess my uh, control freak brain or whatever, my right side brain is like, uh, we need to do something here. And... So that's where I created Pilot. So for me, it's like, okay, I need, to, I need to do something. I can't just say these words and hope something's going to change. And all of a sudden, I'm going to be have a maid who clean. I have a clean house. I, I am living in a clean, organized house. <laughs> well, it's beautiful to say that, but I've got to do something about it, right? So my doing about it was creating my Pilot method and looking at what I could do. And that brings me to the O of observation. Ah, observation. It's a skill. It's a, it's a fundamental skill that I use and remind myself to use daily. So let me backtrack a little bit. This summer, uh, as I go about my day, I use, I, get, I practice presence, and I don't say all the say all of it now I just do it and I know what my intention is so I'm at the ocean beach with my sons and and my little one is running forward with me and um, I'm very present I feel the sand uh, I, under my feet and I hear the waves and I feel the temperature and I, I'm very intentional and in ensuring that his he is safe but also enjoying himself so I'm letting that tether of a line for him to go a little bit further and I'm listening to what's going on and I'm listening how the waves are and I'm very observant to what's going on. However, I was so observant of my son that I wasn't fully observant of a tide pool that he was coming up that we were both approaching and from moments where the, the tide had come to his ankles where it was now at his thighs and he started to run in towards the tide pool where it was getting deeper. And in that moment when I saw his face and then him scream, Mom, the water was then at my waist. And so I, in that knowing and observing how the water was moving and observing myself within that and observing my son, to me, jump into that water and fight that water, to get to him so that by the time that I actually got to him it was at my neck and for me the difference is this so there were other people around on the beach and they were just standing looking and some were around and including my boy's father Kelly who was with Ryder at the time on the other side who was looking like oh 
it looks like his mom's got him. That's fine. And, and the the observation from outsiders, I guess, the and and also assumption that the mom got him. Now I was fighting that water, and fighting for our lives at that moment. But I could feel also that my intention was so strong to ensure that we made it safely to shore that perhaps that's what allowed for uh, Kelly to release and any responsibility but Ryder perceived had a perception that no that's they need help do something and um, you know luckily I did get us out of there and get and get us onto stable ground but the the power of observation for me is so significant that if you can feel how the difference between when we judge something as opposed to observe something so you see how judging can bring in and invite the ego whereas observation can allow for uh, it's almost like a scientific approach it, it, it takes that ego away and you can observe what's going on and you can observe um, for me, observing with the other components in of being present and practicing that because it's a continuous practice. You can sh get shifted out of the present moment when you're observing something and something gets triggered and you're shot out of present time. But that practicing presence with the intention and listening and lightening up, and th that energy of lightening up as opposed to holding everything, all the past, all the past triggers in that moment so that you can observe what is actually there in that moment, it's very powerful. And as I was saying before, it's, it is a matter of life and death. And how we can translate this to business is that in, in that way of having the ability to observe and that skill developed and honed so that it is so um, that you're a master at it and you keep getting better I see this every day for myself so a couple of other times through the summer this has happened again so there was a we were at the public swimming pool and I just in who I am now practicing presence very intentional intentional what the, the they're they're safe environment there's there were a lot of children playing and there were a line of law of chairs and chaise lounges and mamas were on their phones and chit-chatting and getting enjoying the day and it's beautiful that they're sending their little two and three year olds off with little uh, floaties on their arms and sending them off this at in a moment I felt myself seeing like a little bit of a judgment so I also felt the energy of my need to be closer to the environment where all the kids were playing my children happened to have life jackets on and they were playing in a little bit of a, an area a few feet away from the area that I was very observant of something going on there was an energetic awareness that something was going on the kids were not just playing there was something else and within a very short time period, seconds, the the child that was in there, my my observation was that I saw the lifeguard, she was not, uh, she was having a, a conversation with someone else, so she wasn't fully aware of what was going on. The parents that were close by were had their eyes specifically on their own child, Come, I'm saying this from hindsight now, and I was observing the entire environment where I was able to spot the child who was down for the count and underneath the feet of the children and drowning and immediately in into the, the pool the bottom of the pool pulled the boy up and with enough uh, intention got the water out of his lungs and um, rescued him saved it and seeing the exterior from that afterwards of knowing that what was happening with the other parents including his own caregiver that there was just lack of observation going on so again that illustrates the, the, the point of it and I have another third story but I'm not going to get into it because I really want to talk about how observation in terms of business 
takes place. So for me, business and life go hand in hand because my life is my business and my business is my life. Uh, I don't compartmentalize anymore. I used to compartmentalize everything and this this had a condition and this had this was where it was at and now I look at myself and I look at my what I create from an overall uh, picture and it and it stems from the idea of a fundamental and an overall umbrella purpose and uh, values that I live by and what I stand for. So what I stand for in business is the same I, what I stand for in life and it's what I teach my children and it's who I am. So being that being said, let me talk about observation in business. So I'm going to talk about something that happened a few days ago for myself even to notice how this can show up. I, I've written a blog post on it as well, how resistance to change can show up as criticism. And the only way I was able to shift on this, because I used to take criticism very personally, and I could be down for the count when someone would judge me for uh, making, doing you know, videos or doing whatever I'm doing or standing up and speaking out or communicating my message, whatever that may be. So, um, you know, everyone has an opinion and they're going to say, uh, oh, she looks so tired or that color's terrible on her. Oh, what, who does she think she is coming and speaking up? I mean, I can do so much better than that. Or, You see? And th this concept around criticizing, because I got observant and I started really applying this to my business and to my feelings and my emotions as opposed to just letting, my, letting that trigger something in me to stop me, I was able to differentiate what when something would come in as a judgment and and recognize it for what it is. So observing for me takes the ego out. In the moment I get into judging, I know even if I say, oh well I'm observing and I'm just making a critical comment, I'm just making an eye judgment. No, there's something I'm not observing here. And is there something that I can do or communicate in a way that would be more effective and aligned with my own values? So there was, as I was talking with a friend of mine, she mentioned someone, a colleague, and I said, oh, you know, there's something about her that just doesn't resonate with me. I don't really... And then, in that moment, I realized there was something that was coming up within me for me to, because that was a little magpie judging. And that ability to observe and say, okay, wait, let's look and see where, where is this coming from and observe. I was then able to handle a piece of my own resistance, my own resistance to change. And that resistance to change for me, change means improvement. We're not, I'm not changing just to change because someone requested a change. I'm talking about that change to improve or to have more awareness or to uh, focus on something better, to come, come into more of alignment of who you are, right? So observing that allowed me to discover, to uncover that resistance to that change that I needed to move through. That's why I bring that up. That can, now of course we could use that in business and that was definitely a piece for me for business and that also translates to life. So when we are more, uh, our awareness of being able to observe and to state what we observe, but state it also to ourselves where we are listening to what that observation is and to be able to differentiate it between the judgment the judgment or the criticism. And remember, my concept around criticism is that it's a resistance to change. So having that piece of information 
for you? Can that help you? Can you use that to look at whether or not when there is some criticism that comes up in you and says, oh, I can do better than her. She's not doing that right. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, you see, you can recognize it and say, oh, is there something, you know, observe within you, is there a resistance to change that you may need to make? And that allows for the room to make the change and to improve. So I stand for the sovereign and the unique, oh, you know, I hesitate bringing in divine, but that's something that I, in, in my private world, I would bring that up and say, yes, the divinely led, unique, sovereign individual. But for you and I, I will say this, I stand for the sovereign, and that means that you are leading your life, okay? You are the leader of your life. You're standing in the place of leadership for your life and what you create in your life. And that also ties in with piloting your own life. So getting off of autopilot, getting off of the, the scripts that someone else has written and writing your own scripts for your life, for your business, for your family, for your health. What scripts are you choosing to write? And if you don't like the scripts that are being played, get rid of them and write a new one. And start from that place. You can start from that place of observation. And I love doing this. I love observing others whom I, I admire and find I respect them or they, their values align with mine and I like what they're doing and I will observe them and take what I love and see if that applies for me. And can I encourage you to do that also from a place. That's what par partially mentoring is and, and partially coaching. But it also doesn't preclude you from having that responsibility to still lead your life, to still pilot your plane and face your terrain that's your life so your life and your terrain is different than anyone else's it's different than mine it's different my coach that I hired her terrain looks completely different than mine so things that she was suggesting for me landed in a way that what it was not effective at that time and there are some but now I can discover that because I have my own system so this is what I teach and this is what I really focus on is getting that to that place where tools you know we'll talk about more of the tools but just like yesterday as we were discussing the tools what tool are you going to use in that moment and being able to observe what's happening in your life and observe from that place, free of the judgment, free of that ego, allows you then to respond, to respond with the appropriate tool, with the effective tool that will get you the results that you are intending. Response versus reaction is huge, especially in flights, in, in flying an airplane, because most of the, when you're flying, we're off course 90% of the time, but we course correct always. And that course correction has to be subtle. And so you respond as opposed to react. You see, if you react, you could literally take the plane into a tailspin. But if you respond, you can stay steady and on course, bring it back on course. And it creates now, translating that to life and to business, something that you can be cause over and that's my intention for you is that you step into that place of being cause being the leader being the pilot of your life so i hope this has helped if any way it can help bring it to you know get rid of things that don't work but bring something in there and see if try it out try it out from the point of let's see what can i observe today let's see if this is effective for me I'm Stefana Johnson. Uh, you can go to stefanajohnson.com to find out more about me and see some of the other shows. Peace and blessings.